last Sunday. Do you remember that? People were calling, Pastor, are we going to have church? We better cancel church. I mean, the temperatures are dropping. We don't know what the roads are going to be like. You know, maybe we, we ought to not have church. And so we were kind of concerned, right? We said, no, we're, we're going to have church. We knew a lot of people had to stay home because of where they lived and some of the driving conditions. But, you know, the folks that were here, they were thinking, what's the temperature outside? Is it getting cold? Are we going to be able to get home before the roads all ice up? And, you know, that was just the beginning of this week of Arctic blast, right? I mean, were we freezing our what this week? We had a low temperature of 11 degrees. And let me tell you, that is cold in Texas. Because it's not just 11 degrees. The wind is always blowing down here. And it's usually drizzling outside. And so we were experiencing wind chill, feels like, minus one degree this week. And that's cold. I mean, we had power outages. We had, we had rolling blackouts. I still haven't figured that out. Let's just, just turn everybody's electricity off every 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Like, what's that all about? Well, we lived through it. We survived it. Water freezing, the services to our house. Some of us didn't have water. Some of us had, had water breaks in our pipes at home. And, you know, we're, we, to be honest, you know, we sort of pay half attention to our weathermen, right? They told us it was going to get cold, but none of them told us how cold it was really going to get. And I, I don't know about you, but we didn't see it coming. I mean, we just d didn't see it coming, right? Well, I know, I know Melody has already said this today that we're Texans. Yeah, I, I, and I just want to apologize for the way she says that. <laughs> We're Texans. Well, she wasn't born here, and she doesn't understand the whole concept. Because we're Texans! And we're unapologetic, and we're proud of it. And I'll tell you what, us Texans, we're survivalists. I don't care how cold it gets. We're going to survive. We're going to do whatever it takes. I mean, if, 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 if we don't have any heat in our house, we're out in, the, we're out in the garage gassing up our chainsaws. We're looking for a tree we can cut down and bring that wood in and fire up our house. And I'm telling you, when the water service doesn't work, and the toilets don't flush, I tell you what, we're grabbing buckets of water, we're going out to the nearest drainage ditch, we're bringing in the water, we're setting it in there because we know we can pour a pitcher of water in that toilet and we can flush it no matter what the temperature of that house is. And if the electricity goes out and we get hungry, we'll just go in the backyard and build a fire or we'll pull out the grill. And because we can grill on those steaks, I mean, a steak is good no matter how cold it is outside. <laughs> and if it gets really, really cold, and we don't think we can stay in the house, and we don't think we can keep warm, we just pack up all the kids. We wrap them in blankets. We get all of our pillows, and we take them out to the truck, and we start that sucker, and we'll sleep warm all night in the pickup truck. Because we're Texans, and we can flat handle it. Now, last week, we were, we were headed into it. This is going to be tough. But we as Texans know one other thing. Down here, the weather, it changes. My God, today is 73 degrees. I put on a sweater. I'm hot right now, you know? Well, that's Texas. And we can just put up with the cold and the heat. 
But you know, when you go through a week like we've had, you, you sort of gain a perspective. You, 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 realize, you realize that we're not in control of everything that's going on. In this world, things don't work. And we figured that out here in Texas. It just doesn't work. And when they don't work, we have to figure out how to get along without it. Fix it. Rig it. Do whatever we need to do. And that gives us a new perspective. It gives us a perspective on what's important. And when the tough time blows over, we sit there and we reflect on it. And that's a good thing. To reflect on it because that reflection, what we've been through, how we needed one another, how we worked together, how we faced the situations before us with courage, well, that's how we make new starts and fresh beginnings. And that's why we're here today. That's because here in this place, we get fresh beginnings. We get fresh new starts. And you know, we can contemplate this one week and everything that we've been through. The fears, the ups, the downs, the crises, the way that we relied on each other, the way that we scrambled, all the things that we did, and we just, we just realized that God was with us, right? And he brought us through. Well, today we're beginning a time of thinking about Jesus. And then we, we know what we've been through this last week, but I want to tell you about the last week of Jesus' life. You know, Jesus, the last week started out with him being the recipient of a parade, that he was coming into Jerusalem as the hero and the Savior with all the great expectations that he was going to come and straighten out everything that was wrong and make life better. He went into the temple, and for two days, people were packed in the temple. They were hanging on every word that he taught, the parables that he shared with them, the words of, 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 of God about how he felt about his people. It, it, was a, it was a tremendous time. I would imagine his disciples, they sat there and they said, you know, like, we can't imagine it getting any better than this. I mean, this is the best. A parade, a celebration, all eyes on Jesus, three days in the row. And then on Thursday, Jesus pulled them all together and said, let's have a meal together. Let's celebrate the Passover. And as they got together at the Passover, you know, the disciple John, he's, he's known as the disciple that Jesus was closest to. And as he tells the story about what happened that night when Jesus had his last meal with them, he, he introduces it this way. In John chapter 13, verse 1, he says, Jesus, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Loved them to the end. I want to tell you what was happening around that table on Thursday as Jesus was with them. They were around Jesus because Jesus had changed their lives. You know, these are guys that nobody would have, would have called and said, follow me. These were guys that weren't outstanding. You know, they weren't the brightest of the brightest and they're the best of the best. The, these, guys, these guys had rejection. These guys had experienced failure. But Jesus, he had chosen. He chose them. He accepted them. He had patiently loved them. And he had, he had, he had talked to them that their, their life was valuable and it was meaningful, that they had purpose and they had a place. And there was something great that God was going to do with them in the future. That Jesus changed their lives. 
the love that Jesus had for them changed everything inside of them. I mean, these, these were men who were filled with hope and anticipation. And they were ready to follow Jesus. But then they, at, the, at the end of that evening, Jesus began speaking words, saying farewell. And that seemed so odd. And what was he talking about? And then he said, let's go and let's spend some time in prayer. And they listened to Jesus pray. And Jesus, and Jesus, he prayed, let this cup pass from me. They saw Jesus in distress. Perhaps the first time that they'd ever seen Jesus like that. Struggling. And they heard him asking the Father, is it possible that... I don't have to go forward with this. And then, and then, he, and then he said those, those powerful words that, that we all remember. And Jesus says, not my will, but your will be done. And these disciples, they had heard Jesus talk and speak those words long ago when Jesus says, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Jesus was saying, I want your will to be done here on earth as you want it to be from heaven. In fact, that is why he came. That he came to do God's will. Because, you know, Jesus, he saw what was coming, didn't he? I mean, you know, when that weather started dropping and it sort of sunk in what was happening, we're saying to ourselves, I wish I had done this. If I know it was going to be this cold, I would have prepared more. I would have stocked up here, and I would have done this, and I would have, and we just, we just have to admit, we didn't see it coming, right? But I want to tell you, Jesus saw it all coming. He saw it all coming. He saw what was coming on the cross, but because what would happen on the cross would save the world, he said, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Jesus says, I'll take that place to save the world. Because Jesus knew the heart of the Father, and the heart of the Father was the world was, was worth saving. That people that had followed him, they were worth saving. People who were against him were worth saving. And generations and thousands of of people who would follow to today. They're not worth losing. They're worth saving. Because Jesus was, was intent on what his death and his resurrection would do, and that is to make a new beginning. You know, we talk about how the disciples are kind of confused and they didn't really know and understand what happened at the resurrection and yeah, they had to sit down and they had to reflect and they had to think about what all that meant. But one thing they knew right off the bat that Jesus' resurrection meant, and that was it was a whole new beginning. That all this old stuff that they had seen happen over and over again, a promising, a promising leader rise, people celebrate him, and the leader fail, the leader not not follow through with what he promised and people against him. They had seen that over and over and over again. But they knew when Jesus came back from the grave, when he came to them and he showed them his hands, his side, his feet, where he had gone to the cross and where he had rose again, they knew he was there for something brand new. A whole new day, a whole new beginning. And as Jesus met with his disciples after the for 40 days after that, he shared with them the promises. And the last promise he made with them before he left them and went to heaven, the last promise was, I'll be with you always. He'd been with them for 40 days, and Jesus said, I'm always going to be with you. That meant that they were still called, that they were still following Jesus, that they were still people that God had plans for and purpose, they were still valued and they were loved. 
And that connection from, uh, to Jesus, it never was broken. Because Jesus was with them, they knew that a new creation was coming. They wrote about it in the scriptures in the New Testament. Paul wrote in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. If you're in Christ, you're something new. Something new. And you're something new each and every day because Jesus is present, working inside of you, making you new, newer, more new. Right? Right? If you were in Christ, you're a new creation. The old is gone, the new is here. And that's what they understand Easter to be. It's a whole new day. It's a whole new creation. We're not just stuck with this old world the way it's always been. And all of those things that, that hurt us and harm us and, and we struggle with, etc. But God has begun to make something new and he's making it through us. First Peter, the leader of the disciples, chapter 1, verse 3 says, God in his great mercy has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus. I'm telling you, if you talk to these disciples, they knew what, they, they knew what Easter meant. They knew what the resurrection was all about. And, and what they understood what they understood that Jesus rose from the grave so that he could start a new thing. And that Jesus was going to be working inside each and every one of us to renew, to transform, to do all those things he was doing with them while he was here. That's never going to stop. It's going to get bigger. It's going to get stronger. And they wanted to be a part of that. You see, here at Spirit of Life, we're on a crusade to help people grow and change. Because that is at the heart of what Easter means and what the resurrection is all about. I think a lot of times because Easter is sort of associated with the Easter Bunny and, you know, and all the, 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 you know, the candy and kind of the celebration. But what does Easter really mean? Why, 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 are, why are we celebrating this? What, what is Easter all about? Easter is that God who is with us through Jesus Christ, that he is... He is about making a new creation. You see, the disciples didn't understand that in the very beginning, but they came to understand that, and that is that, you know, God, he created, he created a world that was, that was the best world, the perfect world designed, engineered, created, and laid out so that we could know God fully to live a life of adventure and experiencing everything that he had packed packed into creation on each and every level. From the farthest, from the farthest part, point in our cosmos to the smallest and, 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 and most intricate detail in, in, in our entire world. He created it, and he said it was good. And Jesus Christ rose from the grave because God wants to restore that. Because, because God is not settled with this world the way it is right now. He's not, set, he's not okay with us being weighed down by our faults and our failures and our sins. And that's why he sent Jesus to give his life on a cross because what that does is that sets us free to be the people of God. See, Easter for us means that we're free. We're free for everything that, is, that has dragged down our soul. 
in our hearts, in our lives. Easter means that God hasn't given up on this world or any one of you. He hasn't given up on anyone. All of you are worth saving. Even the, even the people right now that are farthest away from God, they're worth saving. And how does this new creation happen? Well, it's really simple. And that is that it's in the life that we live. It's that basic. What Jesus, what Jesus has told us is that when we're in Christ, we're a new creation. We're a new person. And Jesus is with us, right? And Jesus wants our, our thoughts, our words, and our deeds, everything that emanates from us to be thoughts of Jesus, words of Jesus, deeds of Jesus. That every time we share a moment of patience with somebody, every time we share an encouraging word, every time we step up and we come to the rescue, every time that we speak a, a word of counsel and a word of hope, and every time we speak the word of Jesus to someone else, what, what Jesus wants us to understand that all of that is the raw material that he is using to make this new creation. Because all of those things touch other people's lives. That's why this church is so important. That's why every church is so important. Because these are the places where God, Jesus Christ inhabits people. These are the places that set the standard and encourage people to, to speak the words and to follow through with the actions and the care and the love of Jesus to other people. And when those words are spoken and when those deeds are done and we are living like Jesus, Jesus' presence is there with them too. And this is the raw material of this new creation that God is making and it's happening. Folks, I have to tell you that the hope for our world is the church because the church is where Jesus rules and reigns in our lives and we're not always the best example and we're not always the best followers of Jesus but we are worth saving and he won't give up on us and he won't abandon us and he won't leave us because the church is the hope of the world because the church is the place that points people to Jesus it's where the Spirit of Jesus is working inside of us and it's shared and connected to others. People sometimes come up to me and say, you know, you know, my life is falling apart, Pastor. What should I do? Come to church. Why do I say come to church? This is where Jesus is. This is where Jesus' people are. They're going to love you. They're going to hurt. They're going to hug you. They're going to encourage you. They're going to speak words of hope. They will stand beside you. Because here in this place, we are becoming a part of this new creation. Have you, know, have you noticed that the church is kind of a different place? You know, just, just go to your local coffee shop, you know. You know, get your, your best and favorite beverage. You just sit down over there and just what happens? Nobody's going to talk to you. They'll leave you alone. Drink your coffee, get up and go. Nobody noticed you. Nobody knows your name. Nobody cares about your story, right? If somebody does come up and talk to you and engage you, you know, if you're not dressed real funny and just really bizarre, but if you just kind of like sitting there, ordinary person, you, I'd imagine a lot of times it's a follower of Christ that does that. Has that been your experience? It's been mine. But see, here in the church, this is... This is a place where Jesus is, where we, where we are aspiring each and every day to live the resurrection life. That's what Easter's all about. We're connected here. This is where 
This is where the hope of the world is because what's happening right here and what is happening among the followers of Christ and all the other stuff that's going on in the world, this is where this new creation, where God is putting right everything that is wrong and where he is going to grow his people and grow his kingdom until that day when Jesus Christ returns. No one else has, no one else has, no one else has the answers. I just have to tell you that no one else has the answers. The best plans of man without the presence and focus on Christ, they're just not going to take us anywhere. They might accomplish some, some things that we want to happen, but they're not a part of the new creation. Because when that new creation emerges, we're going to see, we're going to see how God was taking our lives, and, and we might think they're menial, and we don't, might think that they're not of great significance, but, but we're going to see how this was the emergence of this new creation that we are going to see in its total fullness on the very last day. Those disciples had no clue that within their lifetime they would take the gospel to the entire Roman world. Never had a clue. And who would have thought that was even possible? And see, Easter says, Easter has says that Jesus can do that in us. This church is a special place. The people in this church are special because Jesus Christ is working in them. You struggling? You having difficulty? been depressed come to church talk to just anybody and you're going to find Jesus right there you're going to find Jesus in that place that's why that's why we, why we come together here so faithfully regardless of the temperature regardless of other things that are going on because we need to be here and in these, next, in these next 40 days, we're going to immerse ourselves in Easter and what Easter meant and what Easter should mean to us and let it fuel us and empower us for the rest of our lives. Because on Easter, when Jesus rose, the disciples had a low lot of questions, but there was one thing that they knew and one thing that that they understood Easter was all about and that this was the beginning of a new creation. And Jesus was right there with them. Isn't that cool? 